everybody what's going on let me tell you i think i just came out of the most stressful period of my entire life uh we had a, a record net year i had three surgeries in 65 days two of those surgeries were in california one of those surgeries were in kentucky Last Thursday, I had my final lipedema surgery. I don't know if you all know, but I have lipedema. Lipedema is a fat disease disorder um, that roughly 375 million women have globally, and they don't know that they have it. They, it is, it's not even underdiagnosed. It's just not diagnosed. Uh, they're told that they're obese. They need to go on a diet. I found out March 1st last year that I had lipedema. And I was, um, because I've had it for 40 years, I could go back 40 years ago and tell you exactly when that sucker came. It came with puberty. Um, and throughout the years, no one ever telling me what it was. But understanding that I had an option to eliminate as much of it from my body as possible, because over the past five years, my mind is young, right? But my body was saying 70, 75, because it, uh, it basically makes you uh, non-mobile, right? Or immobile, or your mobility leaves you, right? And uh, I was utterly disgusted <laughs> that my body felt so old, but my mind was so young. And so I did have a concern and just did not know how I would be feeling after that surgery. I was a little scared, um, didn't know if I would be able to be here and deliver. I will tell you my prayers and my affirmations have worked. Um, I've had no pain. I haven't taken anything uh, for pain outside of this Tylenol. And the only reason I'm taking the Tylenol is because I don't want to have pain, right? Um, and so doing exceedingly and abundantly well, they removed uh, from my arms 4.4 liters of bad fat. They took six inches off of each arm that, you know, they call them auntie arms, granny arms. Um, has been removed. And so I'm here tonight. And guess what? I guess we're going to keep on showing up because I'm not, I have, I have no intentions on having not nan another surgery. I need y'all to understand that. So I said that my mind was feeling young, right? So you all know that I believe that you should have more than one black friend and you should also have more than one young friend. I keep myself surrounded with people younger by me than me because they keep me young, but because they teach me something every single day. Tonight, I am elated to have Vincent Roof with us, Roof the Realtor in the house. Uh, he's a, a dear friend, the neophyte of Skylar Lemons, attended Howard University, and he is an entrepreneur uh, to the core of his absolute being. And so, he did a very popular TikTok video where he downloaded the TikTok video and he decided to put it over on, um, on Instagram and it's very popular. But of course this video goes real fast, right? So I reached out to Vince and I said, hey Vince, I would love for you to come over be on, and be my guest for two reasons. This is the reason Vince is here tonight. The reason is because at one point, they were jeopardizing our independent contract status. So let me just tell you, because I took a screenshot, I have it here. Dr. Bernice Ross, uh, I was going to interview her because I wanted to know what was going on on a federal level when it came to realtors being independent contractors. And so I said, is the independent contractor status still a hot topic? And what her response was, not so much. It was in the Build Back Better bill. And there is a version of that bill passed by the House that is still in play. Given the current political environment, I don't see them tackling this in an election year. So she doesn't believe that they're going to address it, but we should be businesses. And the reason is because I'll say something as simple as PPP right? I received $33,000 in PPP funds. And had I done it sooner, I would have got $66,000 in PPP funds. I don't owe that money back. That was money essentially given to me to shore my business up because I am structured as a business. Every last person here tonight, you are an entrepreneur, okay? You wanna have your business entity and all of your credit. So tonight, Vince is gonna to go over 14 easy steps for business setup and credit 
establishment for realtors. And I'm getting ready to copy this. I'm going to post it in the group, but I know y'all going to wear me out for this checklist. So let me come on over here right now. And I'm going to copy this checklist. And I am going to paste this chat, uh, this into the chat for you guys so that you can get two things. One, tonight's PowerPoint, but then also tonight's checklist. And make sure that you come over to the Q&A, okay? ask any questions that you have. But let me tell you what I want you to be concerned about. The average age of a realtor is 51 years old, okay? We have young 10 to 25 year olds coming into the business, right? And not only, think about this, not only are they establishing their businesses as business entities, they're establishing credit for their businesses. So imagine if Vince got $100,000 in credit, and all his deals don't close, right? He can still use his credit to offset any of his expenditures that will allow him to stay in business just a little longer. So you wanna, you want to make sure you're doing these things because of who our competition is in today's real estate world, okay? Because you do not wanna put yourself in a position to not be around. So Vince, I got a couple of slides, I'm gonna show them so we, we got our checklist, I've pasted that, but here's the reason I want you to start thinking, and we talked about this, Vince, didn't we? What do people need to do? They, they want to scale that business, right? Right, right, for sure. And um, you, I was going to mention that scaling the business is one great thing about business credit, but you also have you know personal liability. You have this um, entity now that takes on the liability if you know anything goes wrong or you're sued within your business. You also have um, starting the business. A lot of times, especially people in our community, they're not able to, they may have this great business idea, great business plan, they're not able to start it because they may not have access to the funding. So this, or just having a business and having business credit, it helps you with you know a few different stones, I should say, so that you're able to, you know, you can scale your business, you can start a new business. If you have a rainy day, you, you're able to have this uh, access to funding to help you, you know, move along and get through the next three or six months. So uh, there are definitely a lot of, a lot of advantages to starting a business um, entity and then, then again, building business credit with that entity. But here's the thing, every realtor is a business entity because they are all independent contractors. Now, right. I know that you're a realtor. So how long have you been a realtor? Since June? Uh, no, June is when I joined Exit mm -hmm. uh, since March of 2021. So 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 not a year yet, right? Right. And I'm I not. happen to know that you have some other streams of income. Can you tell everybody what those other streams are? So yes. Um, right around the time well actually I, like i said i was licensed in march well technically april of last year uh in august i started a car company which is a pretty much a rental car company uh, we buy cars on um from auctions or just various sources and then we rent those cars to individuals who are looking to um get on Uber Eats or drive and make money from Instacart, Uber Eats, which are pretty much rideshare platforms where they could either uh, deliver groceries, deliver food, or even, you know, pick up passengers. So people are pretty much, I know pre everyone here is probably familiar with Uber. So people are able to rent out my car and then they'll go ahead and, and work for Uber and then they'll pay me a daily fee. And then of course they use the money that they make daily from whatever platform they're using to pay me. So that's one business I have. Uh, another business that I've recently started is an Airbnb business. Uh, this is extremely recent. Recent, uh, We actually just got our first property that we are fixing cosmetically, and then we should have it pretty much rented out or on, a, on Airbnb by April 1st. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I'm actually start a flipping business. That's so funny to say because I'm a realtor, but um, I have some partnerships and I'm starting to do a house flip, which we actually got the first property as well. And we're looking to start um, with the actual rehab once we get done with the cosmetics needed for the Airbnb business. Um, and one thing is I have business credit for all three of these businesses. So, so I just want y'all to hear this. 25 years old, attended Howard University, engineer major, right? 
you come back, you come home, you get your real estate license. And in the matter of a year, not only are you a realtor, right? You have a couple of cars on, is it higher car? Higher car, yes. Right. Um, you have an Airbnb and you're going to flip a project. Yes. Okay. But, but all these businesses have credit. So let me just say this. I laugh all the time because Vincent does everything. Vincent <laughs> go, goes out of the country on a regular and consistent basis. Uh, Vincent likes yeah. to profile and wear <laughs> nice clothes. Vincent eats the best food. Like Vincent has me questioning my whole entire life, okay? Because Vince is living the life, okay? So we, we want to do this to scale our businesses. Another thing is, you did say this, Vince, it's a separate legal entity, right? Right. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you could have personal jacked up credit. If you establish your business and establish it the correct way, you can establish credit in your business, even though your personal credit could be uh, <laughs> uh, ferocious, I guess is the word. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, not to. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, my, mine was actually ferocious when I started building business credit. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess many may be able to relate, but I was swiping those cars down at Howard. I was swiping those cars. So <laughs> I had a lot of problems with that. Um, but when I actually started building business credit, um, I was able to do so and I was able to get right now one of my businesses have $80,000 in funding. $40,000 of it I was able to get with poor um, credit and actually technically all 80 because I have personally guaranteed none of my business credit. And essentially uh, what a personal guarantee is, is essentially saying that, hey, I'll take out this business, this credit or trade line will be in my business name. But personally, if I default or anything, it'll, you know, resort back to my business credit and my personal credit will take the hit. I'm not against personally guaranteeing, which we may talk about later, but I just say that to say you can not absolutely do this or start this off with, like you mentioned, ferocious personal credit. I think the word I was looking for was horrendous, uh, but <laughs> either way, ferocious sounded, uh, it, it looked just bad credit, okay? Okay, so you had, your personal credit was questionable, but because this is a separate legal entity, you were still able to establish credit for each of the businesses or partnerships that you currently have. Yes. Okay. And I don't want that to encourage people to say, oh, well, I don't need to worry about my personal credit. You absolutely do. You absolutely should. But you are able to at least start the steps without having a great or excellent personal credit. And another reason that we thought that realtors should have this is because sometimes real estate can be a roller coaster, right? And it puts you in a position to not have to rob Peter to pay Paul, but you have some seed or money that you can go and use. And let me, let me give you a prime example of having credit, right? So I had to spend a lot of money having my three surgeries because oftentimes insurance companies consider it to be cosmetic. When I thought about how I was going to do this to maximize my benefits, all of my travel, I used off of my points. However, for two of my surgeries, I swiped my credit card so that I could get the points because I had the cash on hand to pay it back. My third surgery, I financed through Green Sky because that should be the amount of my reimbursement from my insurance company. So I'm paying that off every time the insurance company sends me a check. That means that I'm building better credit and I also got the points off of the credit cards because I had the credit that I could swipe it knowing that I was paying that back seven days, whatever the case may be. And let me tell you why, because I have an Amazon addiction and this one credit card is attached to Amazon. That means that all of my points I can use on the Amazon platform as a means of payment. So you want to think about getting off that roller coaster. Like, how can we be strategic um, right now? Well, you couldn't. Yes, you could. You could do a cash advance. The city of Chicago has tax auctions, right? You might not have the money, but you got some closings coming up, but you don't want to miss out on the bid. How do you start taking this money and leveraging it? Vince, do you see uh, roller coasters in other ways? Um, one, one thing I actually wanted to mention um. You mentioned that 
you mentioned as a realtor, um, you know, we have these different roller coasters, but sometimes we just have simple expenses. Like personally, <laughs> I was able to utilize my Divi uh, MasterCard to purchase my business, um, my business cards. And that was, it cost me about $500. I'm also able to use that to purchase uh, materials. And another good thing is some of the trade lines that we're going to talk about later, I was able to utilize to get mailers, to get whiteboards, to get notebooks, to get different things to, you know, that I'll utilize in my day-to-day activities, taking notes, writing down my to-do list, writing down my reminders, having a whiteboard. So if I make a video, I have something to show people and people can see and like, oh, he's really doing, he's really doing it because I have this whiteboard. But, you know, business credit was able to, you know, make those things um, an opportunity or accessible for me. So. Now that you said that, I will say this. So with my credit card, I get, I think, three times the point for all utilities. Mm -hmm. So all of my utilities are charged to my credit card so that I can get those points off of Southwest, which is just continuing to build for travel, right? Right. So um, let me see. My cable bill, light bill, gas bill, um, my independent contractors, I pay them all off of, or anybody I'm doing business with, with my credit card to build those points so that I can leverage them for additional travel or go shopping with those points that you have. So there's a lot of additional benefits that you can use. Now, I've been to LA twice, stayed a week, two times, and Kentucky. All of that was off of points. So I, when I sat down and decided that I was going to have these surgeries, um, with a disease I had for 40 years and did not know I had it, I'm like, okay, how am I going to maximize this, right? And this is whether you have personal credit, business credit. Um, I, a lot of this I did off of personal credit, right? But the trips, because I have, uh, I probably shouldn't tell you all this. I have clients in LA. I have clients in Kentucky. I just actually got a W-9 from the association that's in the same city as my surgeon. I took all three of them as business expenses because I needed to con- consult with people while I was there. I consulted with someone on each trip to justify me using my business credit card. That meant for uh, any hotel accommodations not covered in points, and then also for all meals and transportation. So keep that in mind, okay? Uh, man, that's okay. I so- was going to say to piggyback off of that, Marky, um, Another thing that you could take advantage of is because you mentioned that I like to travel a lot and I actually do that of using credit cards as well. I've actually spoken with my friends and family and kind of told them about this as well. I would actually challenge you to the same cards that you have on your personal account, the flight points, because they are great because you can start them. Many of them have a starting package where they'll offer you like 40,000 points or 60,000 points, which could be two to four round trip flights, domestic domestically or international um, based off of the card, but you're able, when you use the business credit cards, it doesn't affect your personal credit in the sense that your utilization doesn't affect you. So you're able to utilize this business card and and use the flight points or use the flights that you're given with the card. Now you can, you can go to a different place and all it's as simple as to make it a business business expense it's as simple as maybe making a marketing video for your realtor business while you're on vacation while you're probably at that resort or maybe even on the flight or maybe in a rental car those Ah. things so here here's how i'm i'm hearing you tell me that we could use this right hold on i'm gonna stop Mm -hmm. share for one second when we come back over here i'm hearing you say if I was doing a video on the cost of living in Chicago versus the cost of living in Houston, Texas, that I could go to Houston, Texas. And while I'm there, I do a video about the cost of living. And because I needed this video for my business, I could marketing. write that expense off as a marketing expense. Is that what I just heard yes. you say, Vincent? Okay, I yes. just, I just got it. Definitely consult your tax accountant. I'm not a tax accountant. <laughs> <laughs> but but yes, you, you would be able to. Okay, so let me tell you why I reached out to Vincent in the first place. Vincent did a TikTok video. Some of you seen the TikTok t- video. I'm going to give you the TikTok video again. And when I was going through it, Vincent was moving so fast. I said, no, we got to take our time <laughs> and we need to unbox this, right? And so Vince, I actually had to download the video so mm. I could stop and pause it 
right? Uh, to write down just the notes that we came up with. So what I'm gonna do is come back over to the chat again. And I am going to, somebody said they were so into the music. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get into the music, get into the content. Uh, Vince, can you see my screen? I wanna know if you can see the PowerPoint. Did you see your video? I can see the video, yes. Okay, and so this is what led me to this because when I'm thinking about the, our industry being jeopardized and we can't be independent contractors and we have to become employees. However, most of the things that Vince has in here, I have set up. So every source of income that I have is going to my business account. It doesn't come to Marky Lemon Drow. It goes to Remarkable LLC. A couple of things happened unique this year. The wealth manager from Chase Bank reached out. The personal banker reached out, right? A lot of people... Uh, Kajabi just featured me uh, for Black History Month. That's because everything is coming to one place. It's being operated as a business. You can be the same identical business, but we're going to walk you through this, or Vince is going to walk you through this, which you must do. If you go into the chat right now, you can click on the link. We do have a checklist for you, okay, the steps that you're going to take, but we're going to go over all these steps because Vince is gonna give you some insight, like the little tricks and the hacks in order to make this work for you. I am seeing some questions in the Q&A and we are gonna come back to those questions uh, in the Q&A. So Vince, when we start taking a look at this checklist, the first one is to set up a corporation. Now, when I said set up a corporation, I went and pulled all these different things and you called me back, you was like, yeah, I didn't do all that. Um, so <laughs> could you walk through when it comes to how to start a corporation? Um, what are what are the things that you did and do not do from this list of 12 things? OK, um, so I did not do the list or do all of these 12 things. And the reason being is because the first business was for um, my real estate business, you know, me being an agent. So therefore, the um, corporate bylaws, the, even the shareholders agreement, um, issuing shares of stock. You, you, I didn't have to do any of that. You are going to want to select a tax election, but you can leave that to the accountant and you have some time to do that. You don't have to do that um, immediately. You have about six months typically um, before you have to make that tax election. Um, issuing stock, I also did not do that as well. I, obtaining business permits and licenses. That is dependent on what the business is. I have my real estate license, so therefore, that's the only license that I needed uh, for to register the business and act as a realtor. Um, register with the IRS and state and local tax agencies. You have to do that, of course, and you definitely want to open the corporate bank account. So if we essentially you're going to set up the corporation using your state's website for ours, um, it's the Jesse White Secretary of State. And it is a, like, I, I just feel like looking at that will make me feel like, uh, I don't know if I can do this. It's talking about corporate bylaws, but no, it, it is not it is not that intense or, or that extensive. Um, it's, it's literally just setting up the corporation, which they'll just ask questions about um, who is setting up the corporation, which would be yourself as the registered agent, and then information about the corporation. Oh, you have the, <laughs> you have the, the application pulled yep. up. So. so I went and I actually pulled the application for the state of Illinois. However, everyone um, here or in our group, they're not from the state of Illinois. So you want to go and find your state specific form. But for those who are already making six figures, you have to then justify the value of your time. And there are some companies that you could go to and pay them a couple of hundred dollars and they'll set everything up for you. That would then be a personal decision. But everyone here, you can set up your own corporation, okay? You do not have to pay anybody to do it for you. I've had some set up through entities contingent upon what I was trying to do and how, <laughs> how quick did I need it. And then other times I have gone through all of the steps by myself and set it up. You do have an option. There's numerous companies that will expedite it, all that great stuff for you, but you don't have to pay them. You can go straight to the website of your state and you can get all of the paperwork. So Vince, when we look at these numbers, what numbers did you do? I did uh, one for sure, select the corporate name, um, filing your articles of 
of incorporation, which is pretty much filing the LLC. I did not do three. I did not do four. Um, I I do maintain minutes. That's with meetings, and you could utilize. You could do that with. Uh, there's software I use. Um, QuickBooks for it, which is pretty much if you have a meeting, you just hey, this is what the meeting was about. This is what I talked about, which is also good because if you want to, you know, write off an expense for at dinner or something like that, you're able to to note that on QuickBooks. So I would say um, I maintain corporate minutes. That's also something that you're doing after the LLC is filed. That's not a prerequisite to filing the LLC or anything. Um, so one, two, five. Seven, ten, which is me having my real estate license, and then um, eleven and twelve. Okay, and we're going to go into more details on that. Okay, so give me those numbers again, so I can just write them down, so we can highlight them later. One, two, five, seven, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, those were the things that you did, um, and you can choose to do all twelve, but yes. but the purposes. And of, um, I'm sorry, putting yourself in a position to have business credit, right. one, two, five, seven, 10, 11, and 12. Yes, as a realtor, I would say, because depending on your business, if you're going to have, uh, you know, maybe a business where you're selling something and you have partners and you're selling a product or even a service, um, you may want to then go ahead and get corporate, make those corporate bylaws so everything can kind of be bounded from the beginning. In okay. that case, I, I think that would, would make a lot of sense. All right. So what I decided to do, just to kind of give you all an example, I went over to the Jesse White website, which is the site for the state of Illinois. And you'll see that they, first of all, your head might already hurt, right? But you can get every single sheet of paper, every form that you need off of your state website, okay? And the one form that I did go uh, to get for us was the Articles of Incorporation. So you need just this one form. It's a PDF fillable form so that you can, and our, our fees are a little expensive, $150. And then there's an expedite fee that one could use. Now, Vince said, I shouldn't even, he said, ain't no way I'm paying nobody to do this for me, right? <laughs> that's what you right. told me, Vince, right? And that's, and what you mentioned though was the best way to explain it. That's because I have the time to go ahead and do it. If I did not have the time, I would definitely pay for it. You know, that, it just depends on, you know, where you are within your business. So you can go over to the, your state site. First, you have to find that state site. I did, um, I do have some links for you on the, just for Illinois specific, right? So you can go over to your state website and you can uh, get the information. And if you go over there, it's going to look like this form uh, that they're going to give you for your articles of incorporation. Or you can use numerous tools online where they will do it all for you. OK, it starts at ninety nine dollars and goes up. I would probably say it probably for expedite fees and all that it probably hit you at about three hundred dollars versus anything else because they're gonna pay you that 99 they're gonna try to get you an expedite fee plus your state fees okay so another 150 200 so you should decide what the value of an hour to two hours of your time is and that would dictate if this is something you're going to do or if you're going to go to one of these third-party sites and they file everything on your behalf Vincent any other insight on on that step no no, I think nope. that is uh pre that oh I'm sorry there is one thing oh well, here's no go back I was go gonna back. say the PDF you're showing a PDF but you can also do the, do this online you don't have to because you do the PDF it's probably gonna take a few days longer just because it, you're gonna have to mail it but if you do it all online it should be a ten day process at least in the state of Illinois okay so the I showed them the PDF that they would actually download you you can do this right on the website. Right. And I think they might charge maybe a dollar fifty processing fee to do it on the website because they are trying to recoup from you the credit card charge of the actual cost. I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's yeah, I think it's like a dollar fifty cent. It's, it's a, a transaction fee. Yeah, it's something. It's 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 mm. it's, it's it's minimum, but right, there right. is a little fee, right? Because the state does not want to incur the credit card, the cost from of the, credit okay. card processing. Yep. Just yeah, keep I, that in mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I just did our Airbnb. I thought I you utilized a corporate car that I only set 
for a $150 budget just for this, but ah. maybe, maybe I had it at $155. Well, let me ask you this. So how do you set a budget for the card? Um, so when, with, with a lot of the corporate cards, they allow you to control budgets within those cards. And the reason being is because they understand that you may have employees who are also utilizing the cards. So now you, you, you're able to set a budget for a specific task for a specific employee if you want to get that specific. And then that's essentially what I did to uh, when I purchased the business, the LLC for the Airbnb business. Hmm, but you're I able didn't to do so within pretty much all of the business credit cards that I have. I'm able to set budgets and also even set, depending on the platform, I, I'm able to set, I'm able to create a um, completely like digital card where if I maybe I don't want to use my physical card for an online purchase because of fraud or whatever the case may be, you can just populate a quick card that'll have um, just a set of numbers. It's not a physical, it's just completely virtual. I can pay for something online and then that way it's just a lot, a lot safer. Okay, you just made my head hurt. But let me say this, you always make my head hurt because <laughs> the other day you came over, we had a discussion about cryptocurrency, NFTs. And let me tell you something, Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm not even ready. But anyway, so <laughs> after we uh, register our business entity with the state, right, we then apply for an EIN number. Did you do this online? Because I've called yes. before. Okay. I did it online. Um, extremely simple process. You just answer the questions um, about your business and the person who's filing for the EIN. And if you are going to do it online, because I've ran into people who have had this issue, they are going to send you a document with your EIN. Download that document, save it, screenshot it, put it in a folder, maybe whatever you do, do not lose or delete that document. And if you're going to file online, you're, you should receive that document the same day. If you lose that document that has your EIN number, you're going to have to reapply for an EIN number. And when you reapply, you have to mail it. And it's not going to be the same day. It's going to take about four weeks. So if you apply online, and once you get that EIN number, please save it. And it's the same if you, if you do a PDF and, um, you know, you mail it in. It's going to take longer. It's not going to be the same day, of course, because you're mailing it. But once you receive it, do not lose it, or you're going to have to reapply again. It's going to take another four-week process before you can get another EIN. One thing I'll say about an EIN number, because I'm an independent contractor of roughly at each calendar year, 100 organizations, I've already taken my EIN number and completed my OW, my W-9 form um, for them so that I always have it, okay? And so I keep that form filled out with a signature on it because I have to give it to so many organizations. So that would also be another time saver uh, in the future if you're going to charge for other services to that company, okay? So, uh, and we do have all the links for you for all of these resources. So we've uh, applied for our EIN number. I love the fact that you said, hey, they're gonna email it to you. You better put it in a safe place, screenshot it, save it save it to Dropbox, save it to uh, Google Drive, save it in multiple places. If you did, write it down. <laughs> write it down, nice keep it. Me. You said purchase a domain name via Google Workspace. Yes, so um, if you set up the, the entity and now you have the EIN, you have your business entity set up. This is an important step for creating the the right foundation for your business so that you're able to go ahead and get business credit. You want to use a professional email because a lot of lenders, if they see that you're using a personal email or even a personal phone number, they will not approve you for business trade lines. So that's why, I don't know if you watched the video, if you were able to slow it down, if it wasn't too fast, it says this is a very important step. You really want to make sure you have a professional email. And I'll just give you an example of why that was so important. So um, when I first started building business credit, my business wasn't making any revenue. Um, I applied. Once I got a few of the first trade lines in two or three, uh, a month or two, I was able to get the Divi MasterCard, which I, I speak about. Um, actually, I was able to get that immediately without having any revenue. 
I did these steps for my uncle who has had a business for two years. He's had over $300,000 in revenue, but he had a personal email. When we applied for the Divi MasterCard, they did not approve him. And they, they allow him to have a secure um, account, which is where he would make a deposit. They'll hold the deposit for about six months and then they'll give it back to him after six months. But with me, I didn't have to do any of that. And that was the main reason that happened because he had a personal phone number and a personal um, email. And then the business, when lenders doesn't look or lenders look at your business as a little more risky when you don't have like all of your ducks in a row. So you definitely want to make sure you have a business domain. I use Google dom domain. I've heard of like GoDaddy.com, but um, for all of mine, I've used Google domain because I like to utilize the Google workspace with the Google email. It just makes everything a little more simple for me. One well, platform. So let's keep going on while you're using this Google domain. So we went to Google domain. Mm -hmm. um, they have 300 different domain endings for you. .com is still the preferred one, but if you don't see a .com, you pick the one that will allow you to have your brand name across the internet. What do I mean by that? So that means that uh, I have markylemons.com, a, a bunch of pages over at markylemons.com. I also have my email, info at markylemons.com. But then if you go to LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, all of them are going to say Marky Lemons because you want to think about your branding too. OK, don't just go do it and pick anything. Be very strategic in how you're setting this up, not only for the purposes of being an established business and for the purposes of getting credit, but also for the purpose of branding. You want to you want to look like a Fortune 500 company. And when we start going through these different uh, completing these steps, it's, you're really not spending any money in order to do this. There's a few dollars involved. OK, but remember. The, they're write-offs, okay? So we go over to Google Domains. And remember, I'm going to share all of the links with you. But then after we go and you get this domain name, Vincent, and you said create a business email account using a purchase domain from Google yes. Workspace. Yes. So, so um, technically, you don't have to purchase the, the domain on Google Workspace. Mm -hmm. I like to do it because it's, it's just one platform. I just did everything on Google Workspace. Um, you could buy the domain and then convert it over to Google Workspace. That works as well for anybody who may already have a domain. So here, here's what you mean by create a business email account. So I have markylemons.com. I also have markylemons at gmail.com. All right. Now, I didn't take the steps to do the workspace because I've had it so long. Right. I don't even think workspace was out at that time. So I mask my email address. So my markylemons.com is always coming over to my Gmail and I communicate back. So you get an email back from me. It says info at markylemons.com. There are numerous businesses that when you're getting credit and things of that nature will ask you for a business email address. That means they're not accepting a Gmail, Yahoo, or a Hotmail. When that comes about, I always put in info at markylemons.com. So right. what Vince is telling you is once you purchase your domain name, you can come over here to Workspace and you can set up a professional email address for your business. Correct. Correct. All right. So, oh man, you got a bunch of these then, huh? Because you got three. Let me say, ask you this. You got three different businesses? Yes. And you followed the same process for all three? The same process. So, yeah, it, I mean, it, it can add up, but at the same time, each different business is bringing in its own revenue. And I mean, I think the workspace is like 15 with the, I think with the phone number, it's like $30 a month, uh, 20 for the workspace and 10 for the phone number. Okay. Not that, and let me say this, it's you can expense. put that off. So guess what? I happen to have one of those uh, Google phone numbers. My telephone number is 773-236-2754. Let me be honest with you. I never remembered that telephone number because if you were to go to your phone and type it in, it is 773-CE Markey, Continuing Education Markey. That lets you know how long I've had that, uh, that number. 
And I also have this forwarding. So you would actually, I'm gonna share the link with you guys um, that you would go and you would set up your Google voice number. And I would say, if you could pick out a vanity number and you can forward these numbers, you could put uh, out of office, you could put different times, like this phone number does not ring at certain times. I think it only rings Monday through Friday, 9 a.m to 5 p.m. because I got I have it on a uh, on a calendar so that it's not just consistently uh, ringing that people call me on there. The next step is I'm, to, I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah, huh? I just wanted to include just make uh -huh. sure when you're doing the Google voice number is also a business number and not a personal number. And the easiest way to know if you have a personal or business number is the business number costs. <laughs> the personal number is free. So if you get the number and it's free, you got the wrong number. Number. Okay. See, and I'm glad you pointed that out because I'm almost sure I have a personal number and not a business number because I'm not paying for that number. So everything you want to make sure it's business. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. The next step is stand out on Google with the free business profile. Yes. So you have business profiles where people can rate your business. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm not sure if they're actually able to rate them. Um, the main reason why I created the profile, I actually haven't even looked at the, like went and searched the profile. I created uh -huh. the profile because um, when you're applying and you have a new business, lenders need to verify you. If they can't verify you, if you don't have any digital footprint, then they're nine times out of 10 going to uh, you know decline or deny your application. So I created a um, Yelp. I usually use Yelp and Yellow Pages. And for the last business, I actually use the Google business profile as well. Now, my business profile shouldn't be too extensive. It just has the information, uh, my information, or the business information, the address, and the business number. Um, and then I'll actually look into seeing if I can actually rate and review my business. I'm, but um, I'm the purpose of the profile like I said, is to just make sure that you have a digital footprint so that lenders are able to verify who you are. Okay, I'm going to go over here and see if I can find. Uh, so I put in uh, Marky Lemons Unlimited. You can see we have Remarkable LLC and the information. I need to go in here and update this information, but they have some photos there. If you can see this, oh, I had to give you all the instructions for this. So one thing that I did was because I operate a home business, I blurred out my house um, on uh, Google. So if you come here, you could see that, see the outside is blurred. Uh, I've heard of some real scary things happening. You can actually go, anybody for their uh, residence, you can go and have your house blurred out when it comes to that Google map search. But this is what it would look like uh, you can have your website, directions, information, hours, uh, operation, all right there in one place, all right? So that is what that profile would look like. And you're saying that these businesses now want you to have some type of digital footprint uh, yes. to verify you. Okay. Yes. Any other tips for using uh, the Google business profile? Um, no, it's pretty much straightforward. You just list your information. Um, and then it should be there. So now when they are, people are Googling and searching for you, you'll pop up just like, just as you did. Okay, I'm loving that. All right. Why Yelp? Um, honestly, I chose, you don't have to choose all three. I would choose all three. And the reason being is because it's going to take you five or maybe 10 minutes to do so. And it just, it gives you another platform of visibility. So if you're on Google, Yelp, Yellow Pages, somebody should be able to find you. I, I'm not sure what process you know, because different lenders have different processes as far as how they're going to verify the business. If you're on Yelp, Yellow Pages, and Google Business, someone, one, one of those processes are going to be able to find you. Now, I'm going to take you. us over here to Yelp real quick, because I, I was at one point the Duchess of Yelp for High Park. I know that's kind of funny. I had more check-ins than anybody else. And I had a little competition going on with a couple of guys about how we were going to dominate, okay? But when a person comes over to Yelp, I'm going to actually do Austin, Texas, because this actually was real big in the Austin, Texas area. We're going to type in the word real estate.
And da -da -da. all right, when we start typing this in, you will see how many reviews they have, right? So Paul has 75 five-star reviews. Um, is her name Renee has 109. Um, these are also going to populate over into Google. He's a verified business established in 2003. He is leveraging Yelp for reviews. Austin Investment and Relocation Property, uh, Austin Home Girls Realty. She has the most so far out of the people that we have seen. So there was a, con oh no, Mark. Strube has a boatload of them, 257. So not only can you use Yelp, right, in establishing your business for lenders, right, you can also use Yelp for reviews and those spill out into a Google search. And I intentionally came over here for Austin, Texas, because Austin, Texas actually started this as a national trend uh, for real estate professionals. And it'll be hard to catch up with this 257 positive uh, reviews, okay? Um, we see two there, we see 26, uh, 257, we see 39, we see 203. So now 203 is coming in that second position. He has been very diligent. So it's a couple of different reasons why you might want to use um, Yelp in your business because I was featured in Realtor Magazine for being the Duchess of High Park on Yelp. Just, and that was many moons ago, just so that you'll know. So you said you don't have to do them all, Vince. We don't have to do the Google uh, business profile. We don't have to do Yelp. But I'm imagining that most people here would only be doing this for one business entity. That means that you should do it all. Right. Yeah. All right. And then you also said, uh, oh, I didn't get it in here. Hold on. Let me go to the next screen to see. I don't have it in here. Oh, what was I thinking? The next one is the yellow pages. Why do we, why do I want to be in the yellow pages? For, for verification. It's not like anyone. I mean, I, I think the, the, the yellow pages generation, well, they're not going to get on the internet and go to the yellow pages. So <laughs> it's, it's primarily for, for verification purposes. Okay. So we can do it. Um, we can do it if we want to, but not necessarily necessary. So I went because I've heard of the Duns and uh, Brad Street, but I didn't know what it was. It's the data universal numbering system. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why I want this? Why? Another word for it is essentially the one of the bureaus for business credit. So your personal credit, you have Experian, the Experian Bureau, um, TransUnion, and Equifax. For business credit, you have the Paydex score, which is issued by Dun & Bradstreet. You have an Experian score and an Equifax business score. There's no TransUnion for business credit. So the Dun & Bradstreet is really important because essentially when you're getting these trade lines, first you have to get this. Um, this is it's almost like getting a, a social or EIN for the business. Essentially, it is similar to an EIN for credit purposes, not tax purposes. Hmm. So they're just going to use this number, and this number is going to represent your, your business credit profile for Dun & Bradstreet. And lenders use this number to decide if they're going to issue you credit or not issue you credit, similar to lenders on the personal side who look at our credit score number and say, well, we'll give you credit or not give you credit based off of the reporting number. So, so this is a business credit score? Yes, essentially. Okay. It's the exact same thing as your personal business bureau or personal business or personal credit score is just for the business side of things. Hmm, I love that. All right. So you want your Duns and Bradstreet. Now, yes. Vince was concerned because Vince was like, I don't know if I'm going to talk long enough. That's what he was worried about. <laughs> right? um, we have uh, quite a few questions that we're going to get to, but we're going to go into a couple of trade lines, a couple of accounts that are very easy to start your credit Gary. history with, right? Yes. And we went and pulled a few. Tell us about Credit Strong. Okay, so Credit Strong. Credit Strong is a great tool to start business credit with. Essentially what it is, is it's a secured loan. So uh, I'm not sure if people have heard of self or even like Navy federal pledge loans, which are typically for personal credit. Um, essentially, you're going to 
pay Credit Strong $200 a month. They're going to report this $200 payment as a, um, as a business payment and as a trade line. At the end of your term, you can cancel anytime. You can cancel in three months, six months, five years, 10 years. I think the maximum is 10 years and then you have to create another profile. At the end of your term or when you decide to terminate the term, they are going to send you back your uh, the $200 payments that you've been making to them minus the interest. Okay. So it's a great tool to pretty much start building business credit with not a lot of money at all. Um, the interest usually on the on each two hundred dollars, you'll probably get back uh, about one hundred and ninety dollars. OK. And that I also think, depends on the profile. I think I use Credit Strong or something similar to it because I wanted to get my FICA score over uh, over seven hundred. Knocking on Well, I'm knocking on eight now. And I did something very similar in order to get me there. OK, so the product definitely works for mm -hmm. helping to raise your FICA score. Right. Because okay. so this was a personal credit program. Um, credit Strong at first, they this business uh, credit, they just started that if not this year, the end of last year. This is it's, it's pretty new. Um, oh, so I did it for my of, personal. I'm sorry, I confused the two. So I did it for my personal credit. Now I need to, you're telling me to go do this for my business, business credit right. to get more credit. Right. Oh, I yeah. got homework to do, Vince. You can gave me a whole lot of homework to do. <laughs> now, do you know a Uline book just came up in here today? A Uline book? Yeah, they they still mail out. Oh yeah, yeah, they still yeah they still mail yeah, out. They, they still, so they still mail out the catalog. They still mail out the catalog. So we got our apply for our strong uh, our credit strong business secure loan, mm -hmm. and then we also have and you know what I thought I put it in here but I guess I didn't. Um, before we had that, we had the Divi MasterCard. Were we still doing that? Yes, we can do Divi last. Okay, we I can do Divi last. Divi I think last. I added it to the end. Okay. okay. Um, and then you said apply for the Uline Net 30 account. What is that? Okay, so essentially the uh, a Net 30 account is an account, it's a tray line, and you have to pay it back within 30 days from when you made the purchase. Okay. And then they're going to report your payment as a trade line, which, you know, will pretty much um, help build your, your business credit profile. So with you on to create an account, because it, this is a little different than the other trade lines you may apply for. Uline has you create an account first. Um, you put all of your business information and then you'll make purchases. And essentially you have once you make the first purchase, you have 30 days to pay that purchase back. And after six purchases, then they'll give you a limit, a credit limit. But you have to do the six first. They'll report your, um, you don't have to wait until after you do all six for them to report the trade line. The, the trade line is reported after the first purchase. It just You just need to make sure it is above $30. And when, whenever you're dealing with any of the trade lines that we'll talk about, there's always a minimum purchase that you want to make sure you are achieving because if if you're not fulfilling that minimum uh, purchase, it won't report the payment and then essentially you're not going to be building business credit. So Uline is thirty dollars. Um, you just want to go ahead. Fill, this is actually this the exact site that I ordered my whiteboard from. My whiteboard in the Millers. They have tons of things. They have chairs, office space material. Um, they don't. No, it's cool. It has the vending machine. They, they, it's a lot. Notebooks, mailers, uh, cups, desk material. It's, a, it's so many things on Uline. Okay, so you said after six purchases. Is that six purchases in six months, six purchases in three months? Do you know if there's a I, time? I would advise, because you only need one, one tray line um, to report per month or one payment to report per month. I would advise just to make that, that uh, purchase every month. I wouldn't okay. do like six at one time. I would do okay. one and, and then go to the next one and then go to the next one. That that way you're <laughs> utilizing it the best way so that you could have six different payments each month reporting. Opposed to if you get all six done in one month, it's going to be technically one, one, month. one month. Exactly. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so Uline is, is one and then the you other one is one. Quill. Quill. And the reason why you should get Quill, Quill has everything as well. Quill also has... 
some things that you're able to get to even start different businesses like a vending machine. Um, they have several vending machines. They have several different tools that I know that people utilize for their businesses for inventory and just different reasons. Um, actually, they have they also have chairs. And my aunt, who now has a funeral home business, she ordered a bunch of chairs from Quill. I wish she would talk to me first because I have a tray line with them already, but she didn't. But, but the point is, they have a they have a lot of materials that people are able to use for inventory for their businesses. They should give you a um, a limit immediately, but sometimes they don't as well. And if they do not give you that limit immediately, then it'll be the same setup as you line where you'll have to make a minimum amount of purchases and then they'll uh, give you a credit limit. And then uh, once you get that credit limit, you can, you know, when you make another purchase, you have within that credit limit to spend that you would have to pay back within 30 days. Would that be, is that the same uh, amount of purchases being six? That could vary. If they don't okay. give you the credit okay. limit immediately, that could vary. Okay. Wow. Now, there's a couple of other notes on here, right? Pay 20 days prior to the due date. Yes. So and if I'm hearing you correctly, let's... pay within 10 days of the time in which you ordered. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to do you one better, and I'm going to say seven days. And the reason why I'm going to say seven days is because these are net 30 accounts. You may get um, some gas cards that I like to utilize that are net seven or net 15 accounts. The reason why you want to pay earlier is because the earlier you pay, the better your score. If you pay within 10 days, um, it's possible that you'll have a 90 Experian business credit score. If you pay within the regular time frame, you should at least have an, an 80. But the higher the score, the better the chances are that you can go ahead and scale the business and make or get better trade lines for your business. Does and, that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So within seven days of purchase, because you have other accounts that you can have a net seven, net 15, but you just held out on us and you know you did. So tell us about these gas cards. What was that you mentioned? See, these are tier two gas. These are tier two okay. cards. So <laughs> that's why those weren't. weren't we got to go yet. through tier one, guys. We got to go through tier go one. Through okay. Tier one, uh, I, I ain't know if nobody like, else. Hey, I got to pay it back in. You know, like, I know I got to pay it back in 30 days. Wait, hold on. I don't, I don't, how does that help me? Don't yeah. worry. We're going to get to the cards where you don't have to pay back within 30 days or the revolving cards that you'll actually be able to use and be happy about. Like, pay 1% of this fee this month and then. So the goal is to get to an 80 pay deck score, then yes. move to a tier two. What, what is an 80 yes. pay deck score? So the Dun & Bradstreet number mm -hmm. is, Dun & Bradstreet gives you your pay deck score. Okay. So the pay deck score is essentially the score that's related to or attached to that Dun & Bradstreet number. Okay. Okay. So I'm not going to answer the questions um, inside here yet because we tend to neglect our people over here on uh, Facebook. So we're going to go all the way over to Facebook. Uh, Vivian, what's going on tonight? She says she followed you on TikTok because of me. Uh, Robin Thanks. says, always informative. Joy said, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Athena, I think we answered what is a uh, workspace, but essentially it is the a Google business platform where not only do you get access to what you get access to free, but now, uh, if you were to look at Baird and Warner, a lot of people don't know Baird and Warner and Prudential Rubloff operate off of a Google Business Workspace account, where anytime anybody comes into the company, they're giving their new agents a Google phone number because they can have more than one, right. and they're giving them that email address. So a lot of people do, do not know that Baird and Warner, Prudential Rubloff, a lot of these big real estate companies they have a branded workspace account, but it's all Google. I just need you to understand that all 100% Google. Um, how do you blur out your house on Google? Sure, Cheryl, let me go get the instructions. Um, I did it about a year ago. And the reason was people are having issues, like some people standing on the front porch, people can know exactly what your house looks like. So I'll make it my business in the next couple of days to post a tutorial <laughs> on how to blur your house out on uh, Google. And guess what? Sometimes um, hmm, I work with a young lady uh, 
a victim of domestic abuse, if you know if your clients are that forthcoming, then you want them to blur their information out. And in states that you can put a property in trust, they should buy in a trust, okay? Um, someone said, I just started with Quill, minimum purchase to do net 30 was $100. So uh, with Quill, that's the response. Uh, great information. Do these platforms work with doing business as? Um, a DBA. Some do. Some lenders, some lenders will allow you to uh, build credit with just the DBA and the EIN. Most don't. Okay. So therefore, I would just go ahead and get the LLC. And it's the same with the sole proprietorship. Some some allows you to um, some allow you to use the sole proprietorship to, and they'll approve certain sole proprietorships, but not all lenders. So therefore, all lenders pretty much approve LLC entities, though. So that's essentially why I uh, did the LLC. I kind of encouraged my mom to do the same because she had a similar issue where she was working off of a sole proprietorship and she wasn't able to get some of the business trade lines that I was able to get. So Yana wants to know, at 25 and a college student, how did you amass enough seed money? All of your startups take money. Um, what was the first way? Well, go back to the cars. How did you get the money to start? Because yeah, I didn't, cars? I didn't start them all at one time. So actually, this is a kind of a crazy story. So during the pandemic, um, when the pandemic hit, you know, crypto tanked. So crypto tanked. I was at home, so I was pretty much doing a lot of research, just trying to figure out what I wanted to get into. Ended up getting to crypto. I don't know if people saw like the whole trading platforms or the people having them join different trading groups to learn how to trade and make money. Ended up joining a group. And it's so crazy. The day that I joined, oil, you can you guys can like look this up right now. Last year, you no, know, it was 2020. 2020, oil tanked. The price of oil was negative. I made a trade on the in the forex market, and that one trade from four hundred dollars <laughs> netted me ten thousand dollars because oil tanked. It was pretty much a sell command, and I uh, I bet on oil going down, and it went. It really, I don't even remember why I initiated the trade from, but it went negative. So I made ten thousand dollars from there. I went ahead and took four thousand of that. And I partnered with my cousin who had $4,000 and we bought our first car. After that, we've just been scaling the car using the um, using income from the, the business. We don't, it's not like we have like another four or five, I don't have another four or $5,000 to, you know, go ahead and buy another car and just continue to scale. So since then, we've just been utilizing the funds to go ahead and scale the rental car. How we did the Airbnb business, straight business credit. Um, I'm actually, I have a partner with that as well. I have, I'm going to use $10,000 of my credit to start the Airbnb and they're able to match 10 as well. We're not going to need $10,000. Um, honestly, we're going to probably be able to get this done with at most eight because we have to kind of, the rent is going to be about $3,000 and then we have to furnish the place and have some changes done. So that's how I was able to do the Airbnb thing. The flip thing that uh, it took a lot of creativity. I actually I ended up partnering with the parent and the contractor, and then that's how I was able to I was able to essentially find the deal, and they did most of the funding, and that's how we kind of started that corporation. Now I'm laughing because you you got the flip house over here in stories right now that you're working <laughs> on, and let me tell you one thing you have to think about. Uh, they fighting over you, Vince. I'm, I'm going to be clear with you. I always surround myself with people who are smarter than me. And sometimes we underestimate the next generation, right? Because Vincent talked about Forex crypto. I ain't doing none of that stuff. I'm like, what? Like my hand is hurting over here, guys. I need y'all to know this. But let me tell you one of the ways uh, I had an uncle who gave me and my cousin $75,000 in order for us to start our flip business. Every partnership I've ever been in, I've never bought one penny to the table. And I've had quite a few partnerships because I've leveraged the knowledge for the partnership. Now, I'm going to tell Vince this. He's going to realize this quickly. 
after you probably do this first project, you're not going to want to do any more because you're going to feel as though they got their investment back out of you <laughs> in the first deal. Like at a point, it'd be like, yeah, y'all ain't doing nothing. And I got all the knowledge. I'm just telling you because <laughs> I've left every last one of them partnerships because I didn't feel like they were putting in uh, a, a, a enough work. OK, um, yep. This is on IG at Roof the Realtor. That would be R-O-O-F-E. OK. Uh, so let's come. They want to follow you over on Instagram, but let's finish these questions because they got they got questions for you. OK, do you have to already be making money as a business to qualify to receive business credit? No, um, you will. And let me let me be specific. You will for business loans. You will. But you are able to get business credit cards and you are also able to liquidate these credit cards to purchase anything, cars, real estate anything so you do not need to have business credit um or business revenue to start building or even acquire these, these business credit cards on the app you may be asking well what are you going to say on the application when they ask when you apply for these different credit cards on the application you are able to put your projected income you may have your business plan you may say i'm going to make six figures this year 24 transactions 250 you know you go through that process Boom. Uh, on your application, you put, I expect to make 250000 or 150000 or whatever that number is. And then that's how you'll be able to acquire business credit without having um, actual business revenue at the moment. Okay. What part of the trip do you get to write off? And I'm going to tell you, I write off my whole entire trip. So door-to-door -door transportation, all meals, hotel accommodations. You can't write off like t-shirts you buying and things of that nature. Um, but door to door expenses, uh, travel expenses, Uber, Lyft, black car, air, bus, all of that, hotel accommodations uh, and meals. Um, and you can do mileage, too. And the mileage changes every single uh, year. But, you know, you bought yourself, a, a, I don't know, a, a vest to go swimming. I can't write the vest off. OK, <laughs> you cannot write the vest off. Um, is this a step-by-step -step, something we can do all in the same day? I'm going to say no, because some of the things will take a couple of days, right? Like the right, probably right. steps one, the first three steps can't, would take can, a couple of days. You can't see the questions? No, no. I want to see the uh, steps again to make sure. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, do screen share. You want me to go back to that initial uh, step? Yes, there we go. Um, one will take 10 days. So setting up the entity, that'll take 10 days. After that is set up, the EIN, you can get that same day. <sighs> Workspace and the Google phone number. That'll usually take about two days. It can be done in a day, but sometimes you have to reach out to Google. Sometimes you have to reach out to Google and there may be a step or it may be processing a little bit slower than normal. So I'm just going to say two days. I've done it in one day before, and I've also done it in two, max three for the, the Google um, Google Workspace. It should okay. not take no more than three days. But also, you, after you get your EIN, you can make the workspace, you can make the phone number, you can make the workspace, the phone, the email, the phone number, the, the business page. And even listing the businesses on, and you know setting up your digital footprint, you can do that all the same day. I will wait to I will wait until the email is set up and workspace is working before applying for a business bank account, just so that your email is already perfectly set up. Because you're gonna need to utilize your business email to set up the business bank account. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I love that. Okay. And then, okay, then the rest uh, you can do. And you're right. So after you get that business bank account, you apply for your DUNS number, you'll get that the same day as well. Everything else after step 10, everything can be done in one day. So let's go back. We got a 10 day, a three That's day um, that you want to have. So you're, um, 15 days. 15 days. Yes. Okay. 15, okay. 15 days total. Okay. So we, we need to change this four steps. 14 steps uh, to easy set up your business in 14 days. 
<laughs> that was a good question, though. I love that question. Um, let's let's go back over here. So we got a couple of more questions here. Uh, so a step by step, Vivian, taking you uh, 15 days or less. Why did you opt to do a corp and not an LLC or an S corp? So I'm going to just say this. Your corp, you can decide if you want to elect a C corp or an S corp once it's formed. But why did you decide? I think in the state of Illinois, is an LLC more expensive than a corp? Um, I wasn't too familiar when I was doing my research, I wasn't too familiar with, uh, the corporation. So that's honestly why I went the LLC route. When I was doing my research, I was familiar with, or I was running to running into people who are doing it and, um, other business coaches who are doing it with the LLC. So that's just kind of what I educated myself on. And then I just went that route. Now, as far as I know that you can, the way you set up your entity and the way that you're taxed are two different things. You can set up an LLC and be taxed as an S corp. Yes, you can, because that's what I do. Exactly. So I'm so, an LLC taxed as an S corp. So you're not a corporation, you're an LLC. Yes. Okay. I'm an LLC. And this because you were most familiar with it. With and you LLC can take the S corp um, election, whether you're an LLC or a corporation. Yes. Okay. All right. That was that was honest. Are you able to do several doing business as under one corporate entity LLC? So what are you, you yeah. are they're asking, are you able to have several DBAs? Yes, under one corporate entity. That I am not 100 percent sure on. I know that you're able to have a DBA and you're able to use the DBA to build business credit if you have if it's a, for under an LLC. Um, but I'm not sure if you're able to use several, but everybody's in, in the chat box is saying yes. Yes. So, so let's, we're going to do some research, but Patty, the, the, the chat box is saying, yes, we're going to say Carla Bell said it. <laughs> what if I have a domain address, but it's being used as a forwarding to my brokerage provided website? Is that okay? I guess it's the question is, is it a business? Um, is what is the email? If it's going to, it sounds like it shouldn't be a, it's not going to be a Gmail or Yahoo if it's the brokerage email. Right. So you want it to be all about this business entity that you're setting up. Yes. You just want, now it, it needs to be a business email. Now, technically, if it's, you know, maybe, maybe you have a business that's, I don't know, uh, something laundromat at laundromat llc.com. And you may have a realtor email that's a business email for this laundromat. Technically, you could get away with that. I think you are, you're mixing, you're mixing and that could become confusing maybe. Or even if a situation happens where she no longer has access to that brokerage email, that could be a, a potential problem. Let me give a technical uh, way to do this. I would go back to who you have your uh, domain name registered to. You can do a subdomain and forward it to the brokerage website to then use that standalone domain for whatever this business is. So let me give you an example. I'm Marky Lemons, I'm at Exit, right? Could I forward my MarkyLemons.com email address to Exit? Um, yes, but I can tell you right now, I use it on the Marky Lemons business, but I could have MarkyLemons.com uh, forward slash Exit that then forwards to that address and still keep my marquee lemon so you i would say definitely think about um subdomain names and other ways to be able to use it because you definitely have subdomains of your domain name if you if you kind of want to hack the system right. and use it for uh multiple things i have my branding colors fonts i have my name everywhere but i uh, I'm just not sure how to name my corporation as either my name or for my business. I would want you to go back. I mean, first of all, you can have your your name can be your business, right? right. Um, I, I, I had Mark, I had Marky Lemons Unlimited. I came back and rebranded it Remarkable LLC. So I would say um, Vivian Demis definitely could be your business name, or it could be um, uh, VD, you know, uh, Enterprises, however you want to work that. Um, I would say sit with it for a day or two, 
before making that decision. Um, mine, I did a spin on it. It is remarketable. I was able to bring in my name, the word marketing and real estate. And, and it's a made up, and remarketable is, is totally made up, M-A-R-K-I. So you can make something up uh, if that works for you, okay? Uh, let's see here. I have a domain name through GoDaddy. Do I understand that I can use that as a Google email address? I can tell you, yes, you can. Kanisha, yes, most definitely you can, because guess what? I've done it. So yes, you can. Does the Google voice ring through to your cell phone number at all? Yes, if you set it up. So all this phone rings two different numbers, the Google voice number and then my general telephone number. I have two different uh, inboxes, one for the actual number being 454 and then one for uh, the other number. So it comes to your number. And here's the joy of that, right? It's a vanity number. I get to turn that number off. So that means I don't get calls from that number after a certain time. That's the joy. You can turn it on and off. You can have it on a schedule uh, where it turns on and off. How can you make your home address not appear? I'm, everybody, I'm gonna do a tutorial. I have to go back and read the, you do it one time and you forget, right? Um, I'm gonna go back and find out how to do that and do a video for you guys by the weekend on, let me say this, your address appears. The picture of your house is fogged out, right? Or blurred out. What if they want, what if they want your personal social? I do, how do we avoid that? Okay, so most applications are going to ask for your personal social for verification. And that is, um, that doesn't mean that it's a personal guarantee. I think that's required by law for them to make sure they identify the person who is applying for business credit. That is fine. I've put my social on any application that says this is for verification. Now, there's going to be two sections typically. One is going to be for personal guaranteeing, and one is going to be also for the um, identity verification. Okay. Don't insert it. Don't put it with the personal guarantee. Um, okay. And then I guess another tip that I could give you guys where some applications may ask for them is uh, typically you want to, on my applications, I'll say that my business has been in business for at least six months. And then if you put it was, it's only been about one or two applications where that was required for me to put that. And then I was able to get the business credit without a personal guarantee. Okay. Um, but outside of that, outside of those one or two applications that you guys may not ever even use, you should be fine to just, you know, say what the, the just actually, actually answer the question. So there are a couple of questions. I need everybody to bring their questions over to the Q&A and not in the chat but I don't want anyone to think that I'm ignoring this question, which is a big question. Marky, as a broker, why did you decide to go with a brokerage instead of your own? So I've had the opportunity. I came into the business as a broker owning my own company. I then went into a partnership agreement at uh, Keller Williams. I still get Keller Williams checks almost every single month through profit share. Um, I then did a memorandum of understanding and opened up a Century 21 affiliated office with Zeke Morris and Hyde Park. I left after one year because hmm, they didn't deliver on their promise. I came home and I was holding my own license. My profit share checks start to increase uh, the longer I was gone from Keller Williams. I'm like, dang, I like this extra money. It's this car note money, right? And I went back and I looked at three different business models. I had a long-term relationship with Nick Liebert. The reason I do not manage licensees because my, my main source of income is from being a real estate keynote speaker, right? The way the business structure is set up at the franchise that I'm affiliated with, I'm pretty sure I made $60,000 last year off of referrals, off of revenue share, and I did not have to manage one agent. The management is left to Nick and it is left to Eve. I don't think I would get that anywhere else. And I still had my income from speaking and all of these other things. So I wanted to put myself in a position, I am a licensed managing broker, to not have the responsibilities of managing other licensees. And let me be clear, when I was managing other licensees, 
I was my best agent. So it was actually not a good idea for me to ever have other agents because I made the most amount of money. And that means that I was deviating from sales to manage and I don't want to manage. And so uh, that was a great question. I wanted to make sure that I answered it and, and very clear and direct. So I can live off of my revenue share income just from exit. And it is probably my third stream of income. It is my third stream of income. That's why. It, let me say this as an entrepreneur, because I've been self-employed since the age of 10. You do not want to be an entrepreneur for the purposes of calling yourself one. A lot of people really get off on, I'm an entrepreneur. But if you're not having net income, you can let, that means absolutely nothing. I know a lot of broke entrepreneurs. Look at what you do good. And, and do it phenomenally. And here's the new thing, Compass changed. Compass changed the real estate world. Before Compass, everybody was buying offices and they knew that they would get 20% production, 80% dead weight. Now, because of Compass, because they changed it, right? People buy individuals and they buy teams. And so you could be a phenomenal team at an office and sell yourself to the highest bidder, just like people are selling companies. Just keep that in mind. Um, can anyone operating a sole proprietorship benefit from any of the resources that we have discussed this evening? You can. Um, you are just limited, I would say. You're more limited than someone who's operating out of an LLC entity. But you definitely can. Chase gives business cards to sole proprietorships, um, FNBO, BHG. There are a few banks that, that, that definitely extend credit to sole proprietorships. So Lakeisha has a great question. I'm pretty sure we're going to say the same answer. If you have multiple businesses that are different in nature, such as a real estate and a medical business, do you recommend having a separate LLC for each? We just going to both shake our heads. Right. Most, yeah, you definitely want to yeah. have uh, put like businesses together. OK, um, but let me say this. You could have a real estate investment company, a real estate brokerage. You could put that under one. But when we are talking about medical and real estate, mm -hmm. it's going to create too much confusion. Definitely, you would want to have uh, multiple entities. You, you have multiple, right? Yes. And then okay. you definitely because of liability, you don't want, you know, the metal, a medical issue to now be taking money from your real estate business or vice versa. So. So uh, Lene has a question. I thought that the Google business profile should be attached to a brick and board, mortar brokerage location only. Absolutely not. Right. Um, we have so many brokerages now that are using, uh, what is that company, Regis, uh, uh, Regis type locations? Virtual. Um, virtual, a virtual office, right? <clears throat> um, and so I would say you have, to, you have to follow your state license and rules and regulations. And it does not have to be a brick and mortar uh, location. No, it does not have to be brick and I, mortar. I, if you can get a brick and mortar location, absolutely. If you can't, virtual address. You should. You, you will still be able to get funded. Um, do you need to use the Google business email or just have it for show? Oh yeah, you don't need to. No, you don't. You don't need to use it. Um, this is what I told my uncle, or this is what we did for him. He created another a business email so that when we apply for funding, he's able to utilize this business email and all his ducks in the row. He has a professional email, professional number, but for his day-to-day -day business, he still uses his the email that he's been using because he honestly has to. He has auctions and different contacts that's connected to that email already. That could be a huge headache transferring everything for him. So we just used his business email for the purposes of building business credit. Uh, Vincent, go grab your, uh, if you can, go grab your Instagram handle and put it into the chat for everybody so that they can follow you. Uh, Patricia says she's stuck. <laughs> uh, she doesn't know if she should use her name or if she should register her company, PGI Ventures. Um, I would probably go with PGI Ventures or do a spin on Patricia. Um, and your last name, which I'm not going to butcher, uh, Patricia O. Um, either one is okay. Like I had Marky Lemons Unlimited Inc. for years. Uh, I had Lemons Enterprise. I had the Lemons Marketing Group. I mean, like any way you feel comfortable and expressing it, 
definitely you should do it. Um, I would say put a spin on it. Um, if your name, because my name is unique, Marky Lemons Rao, I don't use Rao in many things because no one knows how to spell it, period. Uh, so make it easy also for people to be able to find you and for them to not call you back because they spelled your name incorrectly. Um, do you recommend a good bank for new businesses? Oh, I do. I recommend Navy Federal. I recommend having a Navy Federal account. Um, I recommend Chase. And I'll tell you why I recommend these banks. Chase, Navy Federal. And I also recommend having a PayPal business account. This is why I recommend Navy Federal. I recommend Navy Federal because uh, Navy Federal is just a great bank from on the personal and business side. But Navy Federal offers a business credit card that does not um, report to anything. So I guess for the purposes of building business credit, this isn't necessarily a, an advantage, but you may have a project or anything that you need to have happen. And now you're able to max out this Navy Federal credit card and it not hurt you, the utilization not hurt you. Now, granted, no business credit car utilization is going to hurt your personal profile, but it's possible that if you max out 80% of your business credit, it'll still be a little difficult, a little more difficult to go ahead and get a new um, credit card or credit line. But if you max out this Navy Federal card, it's not reported to anything unless you miss a payment or default. So as long as you don't do those things, you're able to use that card and then, um, and pretty much, you know, it, it, the utilization doesn't affect you. Chase is good. And the reason why I would recommend Chase is because they're the only bank that I'm aware of, as at least of, as of right now, that, uh, that has Zelle built into the business bank account. Navy Federal, you cannot accept Zelle. PNC, you cannot accept Zelle. Um, Wells, you cannot accept Zelle payments. So if you're going to have a business that, that can maybe accept payments from Zelle, um, Chase is a great bank to have. PNC, not PNC, PayPal, I recommend having a PayPal business account because after three months of whatever revenue comes into PayPal, you're able to apply for a loan and they'll give you like two or three times that amount, I believe. I think it's two to three times that amount that you've had come in, whatever amount of revenue you've had come in in the past three months. So if you need a loan, maybe to scale the business, uh, you know, the rainy day, anything, or maybe you have a, a new business that you want to start. You can, you're able to get that from PayPal just with having three months of res revenue. So Carla uh, made a couple of comments. He didn't mean, um, he's saying they accept Zelle, but he doesn't know if the business account can accept Zelle. So oh, Jenny Chase, said she has a Wells and it can accept Zelle. Okay. Yeah, well, when, when, I, when I applied for, that's funny, because when I applied for BOA, or not, I didn't apply for BOA, I, it was BOA, City, and PNC. They all told me they couldn't accept Zales, and I, I figured I didn't need an didn't additional need account there. Now, here's what I'm glad about. I do have Navy uh, Federal. I got a bunch of credit over there as well. Um, I put some money over there because they had extended so much credit to me, all right? I have Chase. I have Chase Personal, a couple of Chase business accounts. My investment, my market, my, my um, uh, wealth manager, all that is over at Chase. I do have PayPal and I have PayPal business. And guess what? They approved me for $50,000 in credit that I turned down because I figured out how to use it, another, how to do things another way. Um, but let me say this. When you start thinking about establishing other things, PayPal, having that PayPal and all of this, you got everything everything you need and you just copying and pasting, right? Putting it into the different applications in order to grow your business. And me and my whole little click, you, I, I can't say, I ain't gonna say their names, but my little real estate state click, everybody got PPP funds, everybody got the, the, what, the ENT or whatever other monies, whatever money they was giving away. In this pandemic, we <laughs> all got every penny we could get because we have all these things set up. Should you change your business card and other advertising to your business email address and your business phone number? I would say only if you're gonna use it. Right. If you're not using it, no, don't change it. You're, the steps tonight are solely for the purposes of building business credit. And if it's on your business card, it don't matter. But right. Jacqueline, 
I want to know you still giving out business cards for real? Because now we got, we gonna have to do a class. I don't want y'all giving out business cards. I want you to pull out your mobile device. You want to get every contact in this phone. Every contact. Uh, the par new partnership out of the REACH program for the National Association of Realtors was Link. Everybody, I need them in this phone. Them business cards that be sitting over there in the drawer, okay? I, everybody knows I'm infamous for scanning business cards and telling people pull out their phone. I need you right in here, right here. Not the business card. So when, let me say this, take other people's business cards and make sure you scan them, but you want to stop and say, hey, pull out your mobile device. Come on over here, scan. Yeah, make sure you put your contact information in. That's, that's how long I stand there with people to make sure, but only if you're going to use them and answer them. Don't give yourself another telephone number if you ain't answering the first telephone number. Uh, Kanisha says she has three different business phones in addition to her personal phone. Would I be able to switch and use my established business number for Google and get rid of the second phone? Yes. Right. Because yeah. you can mask the number and forward it to all the other ones. Uh, she says PayPal refuses to recognize my name. Um, or did you use any um, characters in, uh, in it? That's what I would want to know. If my business email is forwarded to my Gmail when replying, will it come out as a Gmail address? Uh, that is a good question. Well, I can answer that. Mine comes out as uh, info at markylemons.com because I set it up to do so. You get to elect how you want the reply to read. You get to select how you want that reply to read. Um, someone, uh, we have been using doing business as for 15 years. Do we have to start over? Nope, we're not telling you to start over. We just got to figure out the workaround, right? Did you miss the Divi card? At all, yeah, you did. Let me say this, you didn't miss it. I failed to put the screen, I took the screenshot and failed to paste it into the PowerPoint. And so you still want to do the Divi card. I went over to the website, I got the link, everything. Uh, and then I forgot to paste it uh, in there. So yeah, the Divi card is still going to be very important. Uh, when Carla closed her real estate company last year, she converted her real estate corporation to a corporation that uh, accepts her REMAX commission check. Oh, you know what, Carla, we did the same thing because I had a corporation and when I went to Keller, I had to transfer it over. Am I correct? This corporation now can only be used to accept commissions. So uh, when we look at Illinois license law, the purpose of a real estate corporation oh, is to be solely for, uh, let me go, let me just say this. Let me go read the updated language as license law did update, okay? So Carla, I will uh, get back to you. So guess what? Fence, you came, you did the thing, right? We are hour and a half in. Did you, t you know, you worried about an hour. You was like, he <laughs> called me, he was like, uh, Mark, I don't think I'm gonna be able to talk an hour. I don't think we got enough content. We got enough content because they've asked you questions. The reason for tonight's program is because we thought that uh, the independent contractor was going to be in jeopardy. But because you are an independent contractor and because you are an entrepreneur, not only do you want to set this up to look more professional, right? You want to set this up for the purpose of building business credit for your business because you're a business. You are a business and you want to look like that Fortune 500 company for little to no money. And you want that clear, cohesive brand that had the same name, email address, you know, people joke all the time and tell me, uh, Marky is the world's greatest self-promoter that existed. I am not offended. I can never be mad at anyone because you cannot act like you know what I do for a living. All right. I, you, uh -uh. And how many people tell people, oh, I forgot what you do. No, you cannot do that. What I am going to do, because Vince gave us yet some other notes. Uh, we'll put those notes in there. I'm going to drop the link one more time so that anyone who did not have a chance you have not only the checklist, but you also will have the, let me put this over here in the chat. Oh, and guess what I did not do for my people over on Facebook. I didn't put this over there for y'all. Um, so let me come over here to Facebook real quick and drop this down. Make sure that you have this as well. Let's see here. 
Oh, guys, we have us a new baby at Exit Strategy Realty. Prince Elijah was born. He is the grandson of Cassandra Sneed. She's a yaya now and the son of her daughter, Deja. So we got us a new mm. realtor baby. He was just born. Uh, so pretty excited okay. about that. Uh, I did drop that those links over on Facebook. And as we always do, we're going to take everything out uh, on a bang with just a little background music. Vincent, I want to thank you. Uh, what is Vincent's? Uh, drop your handle again over in the chat. And let me tell y'all this. Vincent did this for y'all, and it, he don't even have a business set up to do this for y'all. Okay, he don't even have the time. So oh. it's hard to Vincent. <laughs> yeah, right. This is the next generation realtor right here. This is the caliber of the next generation realtor right here. 